Hey guys, how's it going? And happy Friday. I was hanging out in the chat while I was finishing a few things and good to see all you guys out there. I know a lot of you saw my stream last night. That was quite a bit of fun. What did you guys think? I was hanging out with Cody. He's the marketing director at Taurus and I had a pretty good list going of stuff that you guys have been asking me, different things you were wondering. And of course, I made another short little list afterwards that I'm going to send to him in a follow-up email over the weekend. But yeah, man, Taurus is doing all kinds of cool stuff. They have a, a fresh new look, like in more ways than one, not only just with their guns, but just the way they're structuring their whole company. They moved a couple of years ago now from Miami, Florida which was fine to a point, except for that they were a growing company. Like Taurus is a lot bigger than a lot of you guys probably think. Like they're selling more guns than almost any of the famous gun makers out there. I don't want to say the exact order of who's who because I just don't have those numbers memorized, but they're a huge company. And the way it was explained to me is real estate in that certain business section of Miami is like where buildings are like a foot or two from touching each other. Maybe some of you guys are from Miami been there maybe you guys can chime in the chat i've not been but i know like big cities in michigan like detroit for example you end up with well detroit's not the best example because three quarters of it's like burned down and torn down but within the business section right the, the little teeny area of detroit that's not like super shady like they literally fight over inches of real estate and that's what they were running into in miami it was just getting to be impossible to have like enough of a building, enough of a complex to house all of the important aspects that go on with a big company like that. So they did what a lot of companies are doing. They went out in the sticks. They went to a fairly, a pretty gun friendly state, Georgia. I almost said Republican state. I know uh, make sure you guys in Georgia get out and vote. There's an important Senate race. A formerly Republican state that now has two Democrat senators, Georgia. But as of right now, they still have pretty good business policies. So Taurus moved to Georgia in a, a small town called Bainbridge. And they have totally revamped customer service. Like, literally, when you call them nowadays, and I have, you call them nowadays and, like, somebody actually pick up the phone and talk to you. And you guys probably heard Cody last night say that, I think he said it was something like 80 or 90% of their turnaround when they get a gun in for service that needs a repair is sent back within one to two days. It's leaving their building and route back to the customer again. That's phenomenal. Really? I don't know about you guys, but I think a week or two is fair. If I send something into a company and within a week or two, you know, of them getting it. And then I've got a, a email saying your item has been shipped. Here's your tracking number. I'm satisfied. I've had companies in the past before where I sent them something for a warranty claim and it was like weeks later and I hadn't even received an email. Like, did they get it? Is it lost in the mail? That, that's a kind of an uneasy feeling. You send them your gun and it's like, did they even get it? I mean, this was even before we found out about UPS may seize or destroy your packages, right? <laughs> I broke that story on YouTube over a month ago now, but man, then, like, after three weeks of calling them, you finally get an email back. Yes, we received it. Leave us alone. Eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks. It literally took me 12 weeks one time to get a gun back for repair from another company, not Taurus. Totally separate company. I'm not here to try to badmouth other companies, but they're actually a pretty famous one, okay, that has plenty enough controversy around them already. I'll give you guys a hint. When they sold out, all of the small gun shops and kitchen table FFLs in Illinois so they can ink an exception with the state legislature. Yeah, that company. But I know it's a lot of your favorite brands still, regardless of what they did to what they did to attack the Second Amendment and cahooted with the Democrats in Illinois. I know a lot of people like them, so I won't say the company's name right now. But yeah, man, I'm really excited. I think, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it off this year because I was talking into Cody a little bit offline and I said, dude, we were on the phone a couple days ago getting ready for this stream. Not really getting ready, just getting our schedules ready. That was like a totally unscripted stream. I just had notes, like questions and concerns you guys want to raise, right? But then we were just talking like what day is good for you, what time, whatever, because we're both really busy. I said, you know what? I tried to do a tour of the Taurus facility like 
last summer and the summer before that, and it wasn't going to work because of the flu galoo. They had like such tight guidelines and restrictions in 2020. And then even in 2021, only like the essential employees were allowed in there, so it couldn't happen. And then this year, of course, as he mentioned in the stream last night, Cody's going on a couple back-to-back -back hunting trips and is going to be gone during the time that I'm going to be in Georgia at the end of this month and the very beginning of October. So I will try if you guys would like me to. It, you know, I have to take time off work and travel expenses. And I guess the reward for me is I get to do cool content that you guys like. I get to experience cool stuff. But me personally, I'm kind of a homebody. I wouldn't really go like out of town at all for even for gun stuff if it was just me like if i wasn't doing this channel but if you guys think it'd be a valuable experience he said we could definitely set up something next year where if i'm already heading down south anyways like to go see psa or to go to the iraq veteran event or something like that iraq veterans in georgia you guys probably know that maybe i could kind of dovetail and extend the trip a day or two and go down and see the tourist facility in bainbridge so i want you guys to answer me if you have input on that because even though I might not see every chat like as it comes in, don't think I ignore the chat, guys. I go through and read the whole log afterwards. And that's why I think it was such an awesome stream last night because I went through and read all the chat and added like a half a dozen more things to my short list of stuff that I'm going to send over to um to Cody so him and the executives at Taurus can, quite frankly, get your input, the people that hang out on this channel. You guys are very important to them and that's the main focus. They literally just want to keep it where they're keeping their regular customers happy. Okay. Now it's awesome if competitive shooters also like shooting their guns, but, but they're not dumb. Cody and his team over there, they know, they know there's a hundred of us. No, not a hundred. I exaggerated. It's way more than that. There's 10,000 of us regular people that love to shoot guns and we can get it done enough to save ourselves and our family. And we would rise to the task if we needed to save our country. And I hope we would. I hope you guys would. But for every 10,000 of us that shoot good enough to get by, there's like one professional shooter, right? So I, I think that's cool that tourists are still wanting to stay humble and still keep cheap offerings for everybody. And they're mixing in a few little bit more expensive offerings for the people that are like really ready to compete or people that are wanting to go into something a little more upper echelon, like with their executive series revolver, for example. It might not be for everybody, but the people I know that have one have been pleased and they've said they like it for the money. Now, I know a Colt guy probably likes his Colt more than, and I get it. There's all of that with revolvers and it's a huge niche in and of itself, but they are kind of, you know, throwing it out there and, and introducing a, a little bit, a couple of things that are just a little more expensive to the product line. Again, for avid people that want that niche. But their core basic price line, like their regular old GX4, the G3C, the full-size G3, even the G2C, they're still pumping those out. Those are still like really, really cheap guns. So, yeah, if you guys think that'd be awesome, I could probably make it happen. I would need to know in advance, you know, but I could probably make an arrangement to where I could get like a, a Taurus factory tour like I did at PSA last year. Speaking of PSA. Man, they're kicking butt. Oh, my gosh. In a good way and an expensive way. Well, here's the problem. These daggers are so cheap, they're getting expensive because now there's four different colors of PSA daggers. Ugh. You could call it a Glock clone if you want, and I wouldn't blame you. I'm not going to call it a Glock clone, though. I'm going to call it a Glock compatible pistol, and here's why. It's not a clone because there are some differences. The ergonomics of the frame, the texturing, the way it fits my hand. The dagger's a better fit for me, so I give it a plus over the Glock there. Now, this is going to sound hard to believe because I have a couple of Smith & Wesson M&P shields that have a hinge trigger, and I don't hate the shield at all. I, like I said, I own two of them, right? I bought one, and then I bought another one. The hinge trigger on the shield, not so much, okay? You guys that own them, but probably a lot of you have swapped them out, or maybe you're fine with it, but I think to say, just to be fair... So I was kind of convinced that hinge triggers suck. Now look at the FN hinge trigger. Not so much on that either. I'm not knocking the gun as a whole. It's just the trigger of it. I don't think so. So I was pretty much convinced that all hinged triggers suck. What I mean by hinge is the bottom portion of it, it kind of hinges. And that's the equivalency or the substitute for a trigger blade safety, right? 
And then I shot the dagger. And the hinged trigger on the dagger does not suck. And furthermore, I think it's actually quite nice. Is it the nicest trigger ever? No, of course not. This trigger right here, this was made by my friend Robbie Wheaton. Awesome dude. Makes great products. This is a small business in South Carolina. More details on this over at Locals. But, yeah, this trigger is going to be better for most people's purposes than a stock dagger trigger. But I'll tell you what, man, I don't feel the need just to swap my dagger trigger out right out the bat. So I actually give that a plus over Glock. Over Glock OEM I'm talking about right now. I like it. I like the hinge trigger better than most of the OEM type um, blade safety triggers. The price? Yeah, dude, like 300 and all those deals last year with threaded barrel, with RMR or doctor cut, depending on the deal. That's like truly an every man's budget gun. And I like high quality guns. Of course, who doesn't? I can't afford nearly as many as I like to. You know, obviously, I don't need to tell you guys that. Times are tough right now. But I just love it when people are able to make budget guns that actually work because the Second Amendment, it's not just for rich people. It's not just for connected people. It's certainly not just for people with badges, although in their personal capacity, they do enjoy the Second Amendment that was endowed by their creator, obviously. Even some of these politicians. Yeah. A lot of them I'd like to ship out, and then they wouldn't be able to enjoy it, the traitors to this country. But the Second Amendment's for everybody, even rich people, but it's especially, it's especially for poor people. People who have dirt under their fingernails and people with calluses on their hands and even people with office jobs that are so like slammed with student debt and student loans because a lot of people, when they sign for a loan, they know they have to pay it back. According to the former vice president, let's go Brandon, by the way, some people aren't going to have to pay it back. But look, there's a lot of people struggling, whether you're sitting there with student loans up to your eyeballs, with your accounting degree, your lawyer, doctor. True story, my dentist, he's an awesome dude, super pro Second Amendment. He's in his mid-50s. I'm a patient of his. He's like the best dentist ever, by the way, at least in this area that I know of. And I do some work for him at his house, too. It's kind of a win-win. We even kind of swap services, you know. And I've known him for a couple of years at this point. This dude's like 55 years old, owns his own practice and has another dentist that works under him, a couple hygienists, assistants. You know, he's got like six or seven patient rooms in there. Not the biggest thing ever, but I just wanted to clarify. This is a guy that owns his own practice. He's become successful in dentistry. Okay, good. Toothache is one of the worst things ever. It's good to have a good dentist. While I'm at his house, he comes home one day and I was working at his house. It's late evening. He looked like a kid in a candy store. He's like, check it out, dude. Like, look, there's a brand new pontoon boat that he's driving behind probably his 15-year-old SUV. Okay, He lives in a nice house, but drove in older vehicles and stuff. I go, dude, what's up with that? That's awesome. He goes, I just paid off my last student loan payment at the beginning of this month, and it was a promise I made to myself, and the wife's cool with it. He said, I'm going to buy myself a pontoon boat when my student loans are paid off. The moral of the story is this. This guy literally... A dentist, successful, making a lot of money per year. Well, by the time you factor in the insurance, all the overhead, all the taxes of owning a business, that's one thing. But just due to the student loans alone, they crushed him so hard he couldn't feel that he could buy himself a toy, a pontoon boat, until he was 55 years old and been practicing dentistry for almost 30 years at that point. So trust me, it's blue-collar people, it's white-collar people. People are struggling financially right now. That's why I think it's awesome. That PSA is really, really stepping up to the plate on it. And that's also an awesome budget pistol. And I'm definitely looking forward to finding out more information on those when I go down to hang out with those guys um, at the end of this month. So if you guys didn't already know, I'm going to be heading south here. And well, I guess it's just about, shoot, it's less than three weeks. What's today, the ninth already? Yeah, so... About two and a half weeks from now, I'm going to head down to South Carolina for a couple of days. I'm going to hang out with some people at PSA, uh, Perry with Right to Bear Insurance, which is part of the same company as PSA. I'm going to do some factory tour stuff, maybe do some shooting. If you guys like, I might be able to get Josiah to do a live stream with me when I'm down there. This is a Q&A. I'm giving you guys a chance to get some questions going and whatnot. 
and um, just getting your input. And I'll come back and read this stuff afterwards. But I'm definitely going to be down there hanging out. And then there's an event. I can't say exactly where it's at or exactly what days it is, but there's an event that I'm going to right after that, the Iraq veteran event, which is going to be fun. It's going to give me access to see some different new guns, shoot some stuff that I wouldn't normally afford to be able to buy, but I'll shoot them and then I can talk to you guys about it. That's why I've been able to give you guys feedback on that 5.7 Rock, for example. If you guys are looking for an awesome deal on that, by the way, make sure you check my most recent Locals post. Like, insane deal right now. They have a combo with an AR. Awesome. I can't give links to sites that sell stuff like that here. Susan Wiki Wiki. How's it going, Susan? Oh, boy. She's doing good today. Now that she knows that, well, the, since I'm on YouTube, she's a real beauty, by the way, in a different kind of way. Can't leave links or promote sites that sell guns and magazines and all of that stuff. So whoever's watching from YouTube, we're not going to do that here. That's why I have a locals community. So go over there if you're interested. Awesome, awesome deal on that. We're going on right now. So, yeah, that might be fun. I could do a stream with him. I know you guys were kind of thought it was cool last night um, listening to, to Cody with Taurus talking about some of their philosophies and just kind of telling you a little bit about himself and what Taurus is up to and what they're striving to do. And I happen to be friends with one of the two brothers that founded PSA and he has a lot of stories to tell. And I think that'd be pretty fun too. Um, I saw I had a couple super chats come in already. Um, if you could get those queued up for me, Linda, and I want to thank all of you guys, by the way, who help support this channel. That way I can do whatever I want. You guys are my sponsors. Thank you for all of you support on Patreon, YouTube channel members, generous super chats that a couple of you have already left tonight, and then also on Locals. It's a different site, censorship free. You can join my community absolutely free, I promise. Or it's a place where you can support monthly and get access to a few more features and perks, and you can actually support the channel free over there. Like a lot of these places that you already shop at, I have links, I find deals for you guys. Just clicking on the link before you go over to certain sites you were already going to shop at anyways. I'm talking like fun sites like this one here and many others. It kicks back a small portion of the channel and then I buy stuff and I review it. So hopefully it saves you guys a little money and frustration and I can sift through some of the stuff. Before you just go out and buy something on a whim that you know nothing about and you don't really want to take the 50-50 gamble, I try to cover as much as I can. But what I was saying earlier, when I went to the PSA gathering event, that's how I know so much about that 5.7 Rock. I don't own one. don't know if I ever will, but they had one there, and I was able to shoot it a good bit. And I can tell you guys, if you're into 5.7, if you are, not everybody is. I'm actually not. I don't have anything against it. Nothing against the 5.7. I understand the principle behind it. I understand the military theories behind it. I understand the civilian theories behind it, which are two different things not having full auto really kind of changes the game with it, but that's just my opinion. But yeah, if you guys are into the five, seven rock, I'll tell you what, for what it is, if you're into the five, seven, it's a smooth pistol. It really, really is the ergonomics of it. In my opinion, far superior to the other ones. I've shot the Ruger before the Ruger's not bad, but I think the ergonomics and how it fits in my hand is better with the PSA rock, the FN, if you guys love FN, that's awesome. I literally could care less. If you guys are new here, trust me, I don't care. You do you. If you're happy, that's awesome. I'm happy that you're happy. But the FN branded 5.7 pistol, no, that's not for me. My hands are not huge, and I just can't hold the darn thing. It's, like, insane. It's, like, super wide for my hands. And then, of course, the 5.7 cartridge is pretty darn long front to back. So by the time you add the two together... It's just not really fun to try to shoot it like a regular handgun for me. Even the rock, it's a little longer than I'd like it to be front to back, but it has to be. It's 5.7. It's, five, seven. it's a very, very long cartridge compared to 9mm or any of the other cartridges that we usually shoot in smaller guns, right? But considering how long that cartridge is, PSA kind of worked their magic and got that thing pretty darn ergonomic, in my opinion. So, I, so that's what I do. When I go to these different events, I try to shoot stuff that either I can't afford or probably wouldn't choose to buy anyways. But a lot of you guys are wondering, so I just try different stuff out, right? If
if you guys have any questions, I'm not going to only answer super chats, but of course, if you do leave one, I'll see those easier and definitely appreciate you guys helping out the channel with it. Um, Jesse Meek with a super chat. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. You were hooking me up last night too. Thanks, man. He says your live stream last night was awesome. Thanks, dude. I had a really good time. I hope you guys did too. He said, I meant to ask another question, but just didn't have the time last night. I'll type it out and send it now. Okay, well, I will hopefully catch that on the replay of the um, chat here because it, look, guys, it's awesome. I want you guys to hang out and type as much as you can in there because I notice this. When I read these chat replays, like the next day, a couple days later, a lot of you guys have become like good friends just from hanging out in here. So that's awesome. And like, don't slow down, just do your thing. The only bad part about that is, is I'll look, I'll see something. And then I come back to get my train of thought, and then it's, like, gone off the screen. But I get it all up afterwards. Um, Rabbit Hole Reviews. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. it. says, love the channel. Well, thank you. I appreciate the five bucks. It really does help. Like, that's what I do to fund this channel. But even more than that, I just appreciate the encouragement, saying you love the channel. And, you know, that is important, guys. I want to remind you of that. And trust me, like, I'm telling you right now how much it helps keep giving me the courage and the strength and gets me in a good enough mood or whatever to come back on here. A lot of you guys watch a lot of channels. If it's a crappy channel, you probably just don't watch it because there's guys that are gun tubers and every type of YouTuber there is that I don't like. Like I don't want to hang out with. I just either don't like their style. Some of them I actually dislike. Okay, sure. That's normal. But if you actually like a channel and you like the person, just remember, we're all just real people here doing our thing, right? People have gotten so crappy, okay? Let me leave with this. People have gotten so crappy right now, like in real life and especially on the internet. Like you just sit there sometimes and think to yourself, like, why do I even do this? So with that said, I have like some of the awesomest viewers ever. You guys always give me the encouragement to know that, it's still worth coming back on here. It's still worth doing it. I've talked to some other YouTubers on the side, and they're getting pretty frustrated. Because there's the really, really top-level YouTubers that just make so much money, they'll just grind through it for the money. Okay. And it's fine to make a lot of money in this country. Like, as long as it's not crony capitalism, as long as it's not fascistic capitalism, like in cahoots with our government, people that are, like, being dishonest with their viewers, as long as it's not crony capitalism, I love capitalism. If you're awesome at what you do and you put out a good product, whether it's physical or content, the sky's the limit. If you're making a billion dollars and you're doing it the right way, hats off. I love it. Okay. Most of these YouTubers are not making that kind of money. So here's what I would remind you guys of. If you have a channel that you just love and you've been watching their videos, they put out one video a week and you haven't left a comment in six months, take 30 seconds and tell them, be like, dude, I just really appreciate what you're doing. You're a great dude. You're a great chick, whatever the case may be whoever you're watching, just remind them that you like what they're doing and that you appreciate them because like, I'm really lucky. I have you guys, but I've been talking to a few YouTubers on the side and they're like, dude, I'm just ready to quit. People are just nasty lately. And like, not you guys aren't. And there's still a lot of good people, but there's more people than there's ever been before right now that are just so miserable everywhere. And I don't know what they want. They just want everything to burn. So you guys can thank Rabbit Hole Reviews for that rant. No, I think you guys know where I'm heading with this. It does matter. And you don't have to pay me to say that. You don't have to pay whoever. Just leave leave these other YouTubers or, or, or Rumble creators or wherever you're watching themselves. You know, give them just a little bit of encouragement. Because people have started to get like nastier than they've. You guys notice this, right? You guys see the other chats. You guys see the comments. You guys like go to the gas station and you like go over there to get like, I ran into this the other day. Okay. I know some of you are nodding your head being like, yep. I went over and it's like two gas pumps at this gas station share the same squeegee, you know, with like the, it's usually like a muddy water more than it is windshield washer solvent, but whatever. I had a bunch of film and build up on the outside of my window from a dirt road and then they spray chloride on it, which makes it even worse. Dirt road people know what I mean, right? So I was driving down a dirt road and I'm washing it off. This person goes over, and this is a family friendly channel. I'm not going to say the word because I like my daughter to be able to watch. And 
I love free speech, but I don't cuss around my 10 year old daughter. And I know some people, their kids like to watch. So you guys can fill in the blanks. All of a sudden I hear super loud. What the F where's the bleepity bleep squeegee. And I'm looking over there like, really? And this dude's he's huffing and he's puffing and he's going, oh, 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 oh. and I'm just sitting there laughing, going na 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 na. Like I was, I was gonna be done anyways, but I'm finishing my window. And he goes, you. I turn around. You have it. It's you. And I just real calmly, which I think got him more mad. I said, dude, I ain't the one. You don't know the week I've had. Now he doesn't know this, but a lot of you guys do. My wife's car literally broke in half, and she spun a 360 on the freeway. Like, thank you, thank you, Lord, that she's, like, here, and she's hanging out right now in the chat, I presume. Look, she's okay, but the stress of, like, her not having a car for most of the week. I'm driving across town trying to find her a used car, and we did find her one. That's awesome. It's, it's an awesome deal. I'm really, really happy. So, But anyways, like, I was in the process of, like, trying to transition from my shop to where this car was, I'm, I'm like, I just look at him. I'm like, dude, I ain't the one. You don't. And he kind of paused a little bit. But that just shows you how people are nowadays. Guy literally was like, that's all my life's problems. That guy right there. Because he has the squeegee. And he's using it. And I can't wait like 30 seconds. There has to be one of you right now. Out of the 179 people watching that's ran into somebody just as similarly. So that's why I look forward to these Friday nights because I haven't seen anybody in the chat even once, actually. Have you seen anybody, Mateo? Yeah, nobody said a crossword here all night, actually, which is awesome. Yeah, Band Talk, um, she's okay. We found her a 2012 Mazda 2. It's a little hatchback, a little 1.5 liter four cylinder, so it's going to be excellent on gas. It's clean. There's no rust on it. For 2500 bucks, I have to replace two of the steel rims because they have small little dents in them. That happens to crappy steel rims. And do an outer tie rod end, and I'm good to go. So there you go. Outer tie rod end is like 30 bucks for a Moog. And by the time I get all my tools out and everything, I'll have it done in an hour. It's a pretty easy repair. And now I just need to scour the local junkyards for two steel Mazda rims. And she'll have a sweet little car that'll hopefully last a while. And it looks nice, too. So I know some of you guys were kind of worried about that. And there you go. <laughs> so, look, I know some of you are like, whatever. Is it a Mazda? Is it a Ford? I know at one time Ford had an alliance with uh, Mazda, the Auto Alliance factory in Flat Rock, Michigan, where I actually worked for years. I don't think they're with Ford anymore. Were they at that time? I don't know. It was somewhere in that time. Where they parted ways with Ford, but Mazda was with Ford for a very long time within a partnership. Justin Meek, you didn't need to leave another super chat, man. But thank you so much for supporting, dude. You could have just put it in there regular and I would have wrote it down. Um, I will write this down afterwards. Let's see here. He says Brada makes a carbine and a pistol that has interchangeable mags. Yes, they do, and so does High Point, actually. He says the PS4 and the CS4. Yes, the storm, right? Can you suggest to Taurus to make a carbine that accepts either the G3 or TH mags but looks better than the crappy CS4? Yeah, the CS4 is kind of an acquired look, isn't it, dude? Like, it's weird. Look, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I definitely see where you think it looks crappy. Now, hold on a minute. I have an ARX 100 rifle. Some of you guys might know what it is, right? ARX 100. There's not a lot of them around, but it's kind of like so fugly and ugly that it actually looks cool too. So, yeah, I think the Beretta Carbine's definitely acquired taste though. All right. Thanks for the advice, um, Jonathan. I will. I don't know if it has been or not, but I'm an okay mechanic myself and I have some other mechanic friends. I will. Take a look at that. Hopefully there's an inspection cover where you can measure the slack in it. I don't know. Let me know. Give me any tips, guys. I appreciate it. Um, I will write that down because I think that's a good idea, too. Now, MCK makes something for the Tauruses, okay? And here's the problem. 
the AI on YouTube, the way it works, if I were to pick it up, they'd probably confuse it for a gun, okay? Look, Susan. Susan Wiki Wiki, if you guys are new, just ask the chat. They'll tell you who she is. We used to be friends, and we still kind of are, but only on Friday nights. Once I go over to Locals for my Saturday night stream, not so much. We're not really friends anymore. She's not allowed over there. But look, guys, I held up a slide one time, just a slide, and they nuked my stream midstream and said I was touching a gun. Now, I know there's tons of gun channels out there that are still touching guns on live streams, and look, I don't care what they do. If they get by with it, awesome. This channel gets too many people watching it on Friday nights, including YouTube employees. I don't get by with nothing. I have an MCK it's called back there, which is not a gun, but if I lifted it up, some YouTube employee, and shout out to all the YouTube employees watching right now, because I know there's a couple of you, and most likely whoever's watching right now from YouTube likes the channel. I get it. I have tons of fans that work at YouTube. However, if there just happens to be one of those anti-gun type that doesn't know about guns, they'll nuke it. But I'll show you guys tomorrow night if you want to know what I'm talking about on Locals. I have what's called the MCK, and it puts the Taurus G3, G3C into a little chassis, and it has a foldable brace, and it kind of accomplishes what you're talking about, Jesse. However, the former vice president, let's go, Brandon. You guys know where I'm going to head with this. The former vice president, okay, and I would know, I want to remind you guys of this because – you know what? This isn't really a political stream tonight, but you can't even have guns at all without some type of politics. It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way at all. It shouldn't matter if you're left, right, center, whatever. If you're an American and you believe in the supreme law of the land, which says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, shouldn't everybody left, right, center want to be free? You would think so, but no, that's not the case. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, okay? That should be so far above politics, it's not even funny. So I'm really not talking politics at all right now because this is our natural rights endowed by our creator. As the Declaration of Independence says, these are laws of nature and of nature's God. But this former vice president, the current former vice president, let's go Brandon. They call me many things. This being a family-friendly show, we'll refer to him as Brandon. He's going to supposedly try to Either take away your brace soon or allegedly offer an amnesty period, which is pretty messed up because, look, grandfather clause, that's BS too, by the way, because the Second Amendment isn't just for people that have been into guns for a long time or already are established in life, already have a nest egg, already stashed away what they need. No, heck with that. And I get tired of all these snobby gun channels saying that crap too. If you don't already have all the ammo you need and guns you need, screw you. No, screw them. Because people can't pick what happens to them in life a lot of times. Look, you're endowed by your creator with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's no guarantee you're going to be happy, but you're allowed to pursue it. And a lot of the biggest winners in life, some of the happiest people, some of the richest people I've ever met, they've been dealt really hard hands once in a while. Just because you're a dealt a hard hand and knocked flat on your butt and can't afford anything right now doesn't mean you're a piece of crap. You might be the next person that cures the greatest disease ever. You might be the next person that goes over and fights for your country, gets injured, is awarded a Purple Heart. You might be the next Congressional Medal of Honor winner. You might have been homeless before that, and you might even be homeless after that. That's just how life works sometimes. So this elitist, snobby thing where everyone's like, if you don't already have what you need, screw you. No, screw that. How about the obvious two people that are just now 18 or just now 21? That due to the laws that have been in place for a very, very long time, can't even buy guns till they reach a certain age. How are you going to look somebody right in the eye, old enough to serve their country, old enough to be tried as an adult in court if they were to commit a crime. They're treated like an adult everywhere else, but they're 18, still can't buy a handgun, by the way, from a gun shop. But they go to buy their first long gun, and someone's like, screw you. You get what you deserve because you didn't buy everything you needed in 1994. Some people need to realize everybody's not 40, 50, 60, 70 years old like them. Everybody doesn't have tons of money in the bank, right? So grandfather clauses are BS. And what grandfather clauses do is this. Now, I'm going to get to this in a minute. The brace thing's not a grandfather clause. It's an amnesty. And it's totally different. 
But I just want to draw on this grandfather clause thing because I've seen too many people hoot and holler and celebrate it in the gun community over the years, okay? You guys have probably seen it too. Grandfather clause means this. I get to keep mine. Good enough for me, but not enough for thee, the person that's not old enough yet. Not good enough for my 10-year-old daughter because she's not old enough yet. Not good enough for the person that was kicking butt and taking names in life and they got in a car accident and lost their job and are trying to get by on disability. Not good enough for them because if they didn't have the money to have it grandfathered in, they should never be able to have one. But the government's smart and they know it's human nature. There's a lot of people that like to feel like they're part of that elite club where they're like, ha, ha, ha. I will have hundreds of grandfathered in assault weapons. And I'm using air quotes because I know a lot of you guys listen to this live and after the fact. Shout out to all the people that listen to this on replay. Um, but yeah, some people that are like, I'm part of this secret super duper group where I get to have. And ha ha ha, you can't. No, screw that. So a grandfather clause is a poison pill because it's the government knowing that if they offer a grandfather clause, all the people that already have it, they're going to actually not only be complacent with it, but in many cases, and I'm not saying you guys, I'm just saying obviously a lot of people think this way or none of this stuff would go down the way it does. They think to themselves, okay, it doesn't affect me, so not in my backyard. All right. I'll be able to stay normal. That's called normalcy bias. And I also get to join this elite club, and I get to be one of the haves, and I get to look down on the, the have-nots. And the government knows that and they play to that. So they'll offer a grandfather clause. So the people that already have it stop fighting and they stop calling and they stop doing whatever they're going to do to try to protest it. Whether it's civil disobedience, forming a march. I think it'd be awesome if there was a march to protest the, the brace ban, the converting it into a NFA item, $200 tax. They can come search your home for the gun whenever they want. Can't cross state lines without a form five, which is a permission slip. Very hard to transfer it, unless, of course, you know lawyers and want to write a trust. You guys know where I'm heading with this? And it's on a registry, so they know exactly who has what. Registration has always, in the past, and I believe history is going to repeat itself here, and I think always will lead to confiscation. They want to turn your brace pistols into short barrel rifles, but they're not going to offer you a grandfather clause. Allegedly, as been reported, they're going to offer you an amnesty which basically an amnesty is for someone who broke the law. And then they're saying, but we'll just not pardon because that's technically something different, but we'll just forgive it. We'll just allow you to keep going with the crime you committed and we won't arrest you. I want you guys to know that. That's what an amnesty is. Some of you are old enough to remember this in real life, in real time. Others my age, I wasn't alive during the Vietnam War, but they were still teaching a little bit of history when I went to school. Okay. So. If you're going to public schools and you just graduated in the last few years, you're probably going to have to look it up because they don't really teach much, much history in schools anymore, at least nothing worth learning. There were a lot of Vietnam draft dodgers. Very polarizing issue. People right now in the chat, you guys are on both sides of it. Some people are like, good for them. It wasn't a war worth fighting. Other people are like, no. Nope. My friend Jane Locke that I saw in here earlier tonight, she's a Vietnam vet. You can speak for yourself, Jane, whether you supported the war or not, but she still went there and served her country. Let's just leave it at this super polarizing issue where a lot of people dodge the draft. And one of the common things is they go to Canada, right? Or if their daddy was somebody high political or had enough money, they'd pay off somebody to give them a fake medical waiver. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? It was a big deal. Dodging the draft during Vietnam, okay? Well, there were a bunch of them that, like, the war was over. Jimmy Carter was in. Yeah. That's the last time gas prices were like they are now with his current former vice president is when Jimmy Carter was in office. Jimmy Carter was weak. The Iran hostage situation, he tried. He was feckless. He was weak. He couldn't do anything. When Reagan got elected, they released those hostages the next day. Back to Carter. The war was over. There was still a lot of political strife about the war. The country was divided on it very heavily along mainly ideological lines like things are today. These times we're in right now aren't the only times of strife in recent history. Tons of strife in this country. Finally, he said, I'm going to grant an amnesty to all the draft dodgers. All of you guys up there in Canada, you can come back home now. And I, as president, will declare that you will not be prosecuted or arrested 
which is a crime. Like you can do major jail time and fines for dodging the draft, obviously, right? And um, he, he granted an amnesty and said all the draft dodgers can come back. I just wanted to put that into perspective. If, and right now it's been alleged, we haven't seen it like a final rule yet, but as it's being alleged, if they provide an amnesty for you to keep your brace, but then you still have to get a tax stamp, comply with the Unconstitutional National Firearms Act, there's an analogy of another amnesty that was given, and that would be where they're basically saying you committed a crime, okay? Which is nuts because you bought the brace legally. The ATF had said so so many times it was lawful, but they didn't need to say anything because if you read the National Firearms Act and Gun Control Act, a brace pistol does not meet the definition of a short barrel rifle. It just doesn't, okay? So that was my rant about why the MCK might be going the way of the dinosaur or whatever. Or it might make your Taurus pistol become a SBR and stuff if that's the route you choose to go. But just remember that. Amnesty. As the people that were around or have studied the history of the Vietnam era, Carter said, I'm declaring an amnesty. All those illegal draft dodgers, you can come back home. If these reports are true, and I'm saying if because... There's a chance the reporting could be wrong. There's also a chance the ATF could still make some alterations. But let's just go down this road. If it's true, as reported, that there's going to be a arm brace amnesty. Amnesties are given to people who committed criminal acts. So you will be considered to be a criminal, but they're just cutting you a little slack. So I think I just went on a long rant about why I hate grandfather clauses because it separates all of us gun owners into two different classes and that's messed up. And somebody who's not yet old enough to buy a gun, they have just as much of the right to keep and bear arms as you do. They just not might, might be old enough yet to be able to physically bear the arm. Right. But that rights endowed by their creator, the day they're born and a 10 year old today in eight years will be just as much of an adult at 18 now as you are. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. When people are 18, they're young punks and they're not fully grown up. I get all of that. Okay. Once you get to be 40, you look at anyone under 30 and you look at them like they're a kid. And I mean that affectionately to all you youngins who might be watching. However, that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. If you're old enough, this is my opinion. If you're old enough to fight and die for your country, bearing arms, okay, and you're going to be tried as an adult, if you broke the law in court, just like a 50-year-old, you're an adult. You can keep and bear arms. That's my opinion. And anything other than that would be highly unconstitutional, right? Let's grab some more of those super chats. Um, Linda, while she's getting those queued up, I see my friend Clover Tag. If you guys are looking for something fun, I think he has it posted on his channel right now. And if you guys go over in my community, you'll see I shared it about a week ago. I'll share it again. I'm going to be a guest on his live stream. So that's um, under a week from now already. Time flies, doesn't it? And tell me if I'm wrong, Clover. I see you here in the chat. I believe we're looking at the 15th, which I think is next Thursday. So six days from now, I'll be a guest over on his live stream. And Yeah, man. I liked that on the Clover Tech Cards channel. I liked that short that you did earlier. That was really funny, dude. Like, I totally got everything to do with it, too. I, I kind of like sports cards, guys. I'm not really into sports anymore, but what I like about Clover's sports cards channel is he shows stuff from mainly. Not always, but mainly like the 80s when stuff wasn't as woke and messed up as it is now. And that's when I was in my glory days of collecting baseball cards and watching baseball games where you just got to watch them play baseball and you didn't have to care about all their BS, okay? Um, member question. I know as a, as a benefit to being a channel member, they give you a um, the equivalency of a super chat. Next Thursday it is. So keep an eye out for Clover's alerts, and I will remind you guys over here. We're going to have a fun time, dude. He's a cool dude, and looking forward to talking to him over there on the Clover Tech channel. So a member super chat from St. Vicari. What's happening, St.? How you doing, man? Will PSA ever be making an AK-74 thanks to AEDU? Okay, that's interesting. I was just talking to someone about that the other day. <sighs> yes. But it's shifted from a hard yes to, in my opinion, probably. Now, this is in my opinion. 
because the last thing I heard from them this spring was yes. But there's a big but that happened since then, see? And that's why, again, I can't share it here, guys. There's policies here. There's other policies on locals. Check my vocals out. I posted a um a post about this exact topic. Look, guys, there's barely any 545 by 39. I am a left in the country right now. I did find some, and I posted it over on Locals. I can't tell you who here or any of that. I'm just telling you it's there, and it's on another site. There's barely any left in the country. See, the former vice president, okay, the current former vice president, whatever you want to call him. Look, you guys can call him whatever you want at home. We're going to keep it very family friendly. We're just having a lot of fun tonight. The most popular and the most fortified of all time, Susan, that's the approved thing you can say, former vice president, he banned with the stroke of a pen the Russian ammo. I was so, so delighted when I saw the Bulgaria Circle 10, which is like one of their big military arsenals, is cranking out and shipping over 762 by 39 steel case. That's awesome. PSA is still planning on making steel case. Last time I checked, I'm going to find out more about that. So thank you for giving me something else to ask them when I go down there in a couple weeks to hang out with them. I'll be right in there where they're making it, guys. I'll get the down low. As long as there's nothing I can't get sued for or whatever, if it's public knowledge, I will let you guys get a super inside scoop of what's going on at PSA. <coughs> Here's the problem. If PSA made an AK-74 right now, before them or anyone else is making the ammo, they'd be stupid. It'd be the dumbest thing they could ever do. I, I hate to say it, man, because I love the AK-74. I've got a, I've got a Bulgarian, back to that again, Bulgarian Circle 10, okay, over there in the other room, so far away, I couldn't possibly touch it, Susan, okay, okay, really couldn't, couldn't touch it, but like, so far away, I can barely see it. There's a Bulgarian AK-74 right over there. And a Polish Tantal. The Tantal's a cool one. I love the 545 by 39 Anyone would be stupid right now to launch something like that, in my opinion, because there's no ammo for it. There's a little bit left in Russia that was already here stateside before the ban. And once the U.S. supply side goes down, I don't know. This is coming from a guy that probably likes AK-74s as much as you, too. So I hope you don't get mad at me for that answer, Saint, because it's very frustrating. I'm hoping once they get more of their AAC stuff going full blast, I just saw the 300 blackouts come out real recently, they can get that other stuff going. Clover has some more info on, um, on PSA, some more FUD stuff. Look, guys, it's all about me just trying to be respectful. I have conversations, just like Clover saying, I have conversations with these people. And look, it's called having a professional relationship. If you, like, burn somebody on what's called an NDA, you're done. You could even seek, you know, legal remedy on you. They could take you to court. I'm just saying could. But at the very least, you're done. You're never going to get to talk to them again. But it's more than that. Like I said earlier, my friend Josiah. I've known him for a while. He's like a really, really cool dude. Like, I really, really like him. Even if he were to quit PSA tomorrow, you'd say, well, he's no use to you. Whatever. Well, I would hope I would like the new guy that replaced him because he is my liaison to PSA. I'd still call the man as a friend, though, to see what he's doing. I wouldn't want to do that to such a good guy either. So that's why I'm very careful. And I err on the side of double chucking before I spill the beans on stuff like that. Um, what was that chat that you just had up there, Linda? I'm sorry. I'm getting kind of ranting here. I'm just looking at all these cool people in the chat. I'm going to catch up on all this chat afterwards, guys. I promise. Um, invasion of the Body Snatchers. Which Taurus do you carry? Well, geez. Which one or which? All right. I'll narrow it down to one. Probably the regular GX4 more than the Toro. But I was just talking to my friend Mateo on the phone beforehand. Red dots. They're a good answer for a lot of people and most people. They don't have a closed emitter red dot yet that truly fits something like the GX4. Cut lawns right now, okay? This time of year in Michigan. Hasn't rained in a long time. There's so much dust. It will literally pack the area where the emitter is with enough dust. Carrying it on you while you're driving this 35 horsepower mower like a cyclone. It doesn't matter. It can be underneath my clothes. 
Literally, if I were to right now, I'm not going to do it, guys. But if I were to pull my shirt down and just like splash water on my chest, it would run off black. If you work in those types of environments, a red dot's not going to work. Not an open emitter, in my opinion. So it, it just depends. I love the GX4. So that's a simple answer to your question. GX4, but it's not just one. It depends on the day. Depends on the occasion, whether I'm working or not. So. And I um I like the G3C too. Like I, I like a lot of them. I'm gonna move on because you guys know me. If you ask me like which Taurus do you like or which one do you, we could be here for two hours. Okay. Um, ANU better home defense ammo, 223 polymer or nine millimeter hollow point. Look, guys, you do you because everyone's home isn't the same. This is not an easy question to answer. I will say this though, there's a misconception out there again. I'm not responsible for your actions. Know your target. Know what's behind it. If you live a place where it's a country mile before you have your next neighbor and you're in a gully, your concerns are a million percent different than somebody living in a 1,200-unit high-rise apartment complex. Fair enough, right? You would be surprised, though, that the 223 a lot of times has a harder time penetrating through walls and things and may penetrate less as compared to a nine than you might think, okay? It's an interesting topic there. I'm going to have some of my ammo buffs chime in and see if they can um, see if they can help me, right, Mateo? I, I just don't know. I mean, again, you guys have to be it – it's a fair question to a point because it's just a common question, but it just depends. And there is a lot of stuff that it depends on. Um, Ray, thoughts on which is better, the MR920 or the Walther PDPF series? Okay, really short answer. Um, hmm, I'm going to go back and forth. Probably number one between the, those two. Yeah, those are decent sized guns. So number one, I would say, just depends, the budget. Probably Taurus G3 Tactical would be the best, and my second choice of those two would be the PSA Dagger. Threaded barrel RMR cut. So hopefully that helps you with that one. Those that that's my favorite of those two. Like I'm messing with you, dude. I can't I can't afford <laughs> especially the first one you said. I can't afford one of those and I don't have the wall there. So I don't know. But those were my two choices for that. <laughs> um I uh, guess how's it going? You were hanging out last night showing some Taurus love. I saw I was reading afterwards, you were giving Cody a little shout out. Um, guess with a super chat. Thank you. Says, let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. USA, USA. Look, guys, some people are into the let's go, Brandon. Same, some people aren't. Look, they want to call him Dark Brandon now, right? Dark Brandon. When I saw that, I said, let's go, Brandon. The current former vice president. He got up there. The two Marines are behind him at attention. And those red lights. Like, those were more Stalin red than Stalin himself. I looked at that and I said, whoa. The Reich that was supposed to last a thousand years in Germany, they translated the old black and white films into color and speaking English. And then I heard Schumann and Amanadash at a pressure. I lead an effective strategy to mobilize. Schumann and Amanadash at a pressure. And then I heard him say, if you voted for Trump, which is 74 million people, more than half the voters, in my opinion, that were Trump supporters, that you weren't quite on the up and up as Americans. So I'm not in the mood to cut that former vice president any slack right now. Not after that speech. No way. No way. That was a big insult to a lot of people. And here's the thing. Even if you guys didn't vote for Trump because you were too pro-gun to vote for Trump or whatever, he... Included you in there too, trust me. Ultra MAGA, they call it. Right, Linda? Prepare for with the super chat. Thank you. And thank you for being a channel member. I appreciate it. Um okay, this is a good question. One that I have to be very careful with. Okay. Prepare for says, What do we do if they ask us to give up what we have? I'm serious. From New York. Well, being in New York, there's a 
look, there's New York State, there's New York City. I know within the city, the gun laws are more strict in some cases than the rest of the state. But I also know, like most states, the biggest city in the state runs the policy and sets the laws for the whole state. So as conservative as so many people are, farmers, people just want to be left alone, that live in, let's say, upstate New York area. I know Syracuse has gotten a little liberal, but, you know, generally they say upstate New York. It's a little more in the country, right? But New York City is governing the policy for the whole state. Same thing as Illinois. Really, Michigan, too. If you got rid of Detroit, Michigan would be a red state. I mean, geez, you could go through almost every blue state. You get rid of one, maybe two cities, the whole country would be would be red, as the saying goes, how they do the map. <laughs> what do you do? Well, I can't give you advice on exactly what to do because it's complicated. Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter about this topic, though, I'd tell you. If you want to read history and read what one of the founding fathers, the one who penned the Declaration of Independence in his 30s, it was only 12 years after the after the country had been formed, after the Declaration of Independence had been declared. Okay, We won the war. Fast forward. The first shots were 1775. 1776, they declared. They established where rights come from. They established what a government would be. Then they came back and wrote a constitution. And about a dozen years after Jefferson had written the Declaration of Independence, he wrote that Tree of Liberty letter. And he couldn't believe how far the country had gone and how much people were already being deprived of their rights. And he said he hadn't even yet seen the final draft of the Constitution. Like he was there and was part of framing it and writing it, but he had traveled abroad and was on his way traveling back and had yet to see. So like the ink wasn't dry, as the saying goes, on the Constitution yet. And he said it's been 12 years. And like no Americans have taken up arms yet against the government. That's what Thomas Jefferson said. Not me. That's what Jefferson said. And then he talked about the famous tree of liberty and that sometimes it needs shed from the blood of patriots and tyrants. It's its natural manure. The founding fathers would have told you you should have literally fought like hell and taken up arms to ever prevent them from doing that. Here's the problem, though. After just generations and generations of despots, tyrants, usurpation after usurpation, pursuing invariably a design that will reduce them under absolute despotism, is what he wrote in 1776. It is your right, it is your duty to throw off this tyrannical government and to put in a government that you feel will be more effective in preserving your liberties and your safety. Like, that's what the country was founded on in 1776, reiterated by Jefferson in 1788. So that's a natural response. But here's the problem with that response. If you were to enact something like that, I don't know, you'd probably be the next blip on the news. If you were to even talk about that, you'd probably be the next blip on the news. So it's a tough answer, and I don't know what to do. I'm not George Washington, and I wish you well, though. I'll tell you how this country was formed and what the founding fathers said, but here's the problem. After generations and generations and generations of people not caring, not doing anything, well, they just kept chipping away and chipping away and chipping away. Our police have become so militarized now. Our federal government's gotten so big now, 87,000 new IRS agents. Usually you can't even tell the difference between your local police versus the United States Army. Well, you can tell because your local PD is more militarized than the military. And then you bring federal agents into it. You bring in things like the National Firearms Act of 1934, the Gun Control Act of 1968, and the Hughes Amendment to the Firearms Owners Protection Act of 1986, whereas after May of 1986, you couldn't register a machine gun anymore, and they're only for the really rich people. But every fed boy in local PD has all the machine guns they want. Why? Because you're taxed at a rate that is like 500 times worse than what they revolted over back in the late 1700s, but all Americans deal with it, and you deal with it, and your forefathers dealt with it. And they can buy whatever weapon they want because they're spending your money. 
because you work your whole life and they take most of your money so they can buy more machine guns that you'll never be able to buy because, again, only the elite and rich can have them and you keep getting poorer because they tax you harder and they buy more machine guns and more machine guns and more ammo. And most gun owners just complain on the Internet. So if you're smart, I guess don't do anything or you'll just be made an example of because nobody else is. So that's my whole rant on that. Um, Jesse Meek, thanks for another super chat, man. He says, a dirty word just for you, poop. Okay, well, that's not too dirty. <laughs> Jeez, man. He's okay, PG-13 cost for it at any rate. No, that's not bad. <laughs> uh, thanks for lighting it up, man. Dude, in that previous question, man, I wasn't shining you on. That is like a very valid question, but I think everything I said is true. Look, there's lots of problems in this country right now. I don't have the master plan. I know the problem, and I'm trying. I believe it's a culture war, okay? So here's my quick answer because I, I want to move on from that question, but I don't want anybody to take me that I was just shrugging it off. I believe we're in a culture war right now, and it could get hot at any time, although I hope it doesn't. We have to win this culture war, and we have to change the culture in this country to where they won't be coming to people's houses to pick up stuff. I don't know if that's the right answer, but... It's the only thing I can see right now that we might actually have a chance of. And I'm not meaning that to dismiss it. I think that's powerful. I think we have to somehow find a way to win this culture war. And hopefully they haven't picked it all up in the meantime. So, yeah. Raw Feeding 101. What's happening, man? Nice to see you, dude. Shout out to your channel, man. By the way, if you guys have dogs and care about their nutrition and their health this guy's like literally not only an expert but like one of the most gracious people you can go on his live streams and he'll give you like lots of free advice and he also has different programs with his business where he can help consult your dog in a very nutritious raw feeding lifestyle that's not an infomercial nothing like that he's not a i mean he is a sponsor just like everyone else give me a super chat but it's not a sponsorship and i don't even own dogs but he has a really nice stream a nice package he puts together so all dog owners, definitely check out his channel, for real. Awesome dude. Um, thanks for the super chat, man. He says, hey, brother, if you own a G2C and could only buy one other Taurus pistol, which one would you buy? Okay. So I like the G2C. Not getting rid of it anytime soon. Oh, boy. Mm, I'm, I'm, I'll just stick with semi-autos because... Look, a revolver, you could call it a pistol. I wouldn't care, but usually pistol implies semi-auto. I'm going to say GX4. Maybe GX4 XL instead. One of the two GX4s. I shot the GXL at the range, guys. And it's pretty happy. The new XL. So there you go. A GX4. If I could only have one. But I don't like being pinned down to only one, okay? But you did it. That's fair. I'd roll with my G2C and one of the two GX4s. I'll say the regular GX4 right now. But, man, ooh, if you love your GX4 and then you shoot the XL, I love shooting it just a little bit more. Let's put it that way. Um, let's see here. Blue Griffin. Blue Griffin, however you pronounce that. Getting rid of George Soros fund and politics would help. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's lots of problems. We need to solve them, guys. Like, literally need to solve them. Big time. Coming out your door in a blaze of glory, not so much. It's not to that point, and it wouldn't be good. It just wouldn't be good. You guys know what I'm saying. A lot of stuff's happened. A lot of stuff's happened in this country since the late 1700s. Um, Rudy Finney, what's happening, dude? Michigan guy with a generous super chat and a channel member. Thanks, dude. I appreciate you, man. He said, got the package from you today. Thank you much. Thank you very much for it. Well, I hope you like it. And um, if you like it, you can um, thank Linda. It sounds like you like it. So we'll give Linda the credit. I just told her to send you something nice. I don't know what it was, actually. So that's all her. Now, if it was something really crappy you didn't like, then you can blame me, and I was actually the one that mailed it. Sound good? No, I'm glad you like it, man. He says, thanks for all you do for the community and your generosity in general. Greatly appreciated. Well, well, thank you, dude. 
I appreciate your generosity and I try to give back as much as I can to you guys. Look, the main thing is, is I try just to have fun. I try to uplift you guys. I'm trying to encourage you. Even when I talk about doom and gloom topics, like I did a couple of times tonight, that's all meant for encouragement. We got to stay strong. We got to stay tough. We got to know that we have each other. And then I like to try to help people out with guns too. So hopefully that's the main benefit you guys get. But I do like to send fun stuff. And it's funny you said that because in a few minutes here, I want to give away something else. Something that I actually gave away two weeks ago. And the person that won it, they either didn't want to or they didn't feel like it or I have no idea. They never emailed to claim the prize. So we're going to figure out a little bit different way to give that away here in a little bit. But I am going to give something away tonight. That's pretty cool. Thanks, Rudy. Denny's Plant Based Journey. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. Thanks for the super chat and channel member. And gosh, I could list like four or five other ways you've helped support the channel. Thanks, dude. He said, I'm in an elite club too. Oh, are you really? Hold on a minute. Let me keep reading. I know Denny's a good guy. I'm not going to stop there. He said, I'm a 2A EDU channel member. Yes, you are actually. That's a very elite club to be in, I would admit. I've been trying to join it, but they wouldn't let me join. It said you can't be a member of your own channel. So I'm not part of that, guys, but I'm glad you are. He says some of the best patriots I know are members. Come on, folks. It's cheap and helps the cause. Well, well, thanks, dude, for giving a shout-out for supporting the channel, and I appreciate it, man. That's what I said earlier, though. You knew I wasn't lying, Denny. I'm like, there's some good people who – who hang out in this chat every single week. I haven't seen a troll around here in like forever, by the way. They're really not a problem here. But I appreciate all the encouragement, guys. For real, I'm looking out of the corner of my eye, and I see white space marines out there. That's a good one. Marco Polo with the super chat. I, and a channel member. Thanks, man. How you doing, dude? How's that AR doing? I remember when you built that. Marco hangs out with us over on Locals, and as a supporter over there, he was posting. He's like, guys, I bought the kit. and Dude, I love it, man. I love it. You just kind of got into AR, right, since you've been hanging out here? He says, evening, sir. Thanks for the deal notifications. Locals, keep the good work and your great reviews. Range time was fun. <coughs> yeah, what did you think of that Glock, dude? Huh? I've been told, look, I like daggers better than OEM Gen 3 Glocks, okay? It's just true, but... I've been told, even among some of the Glock fans, uh, <clears throat> Mateo, even people like him who's hanging out in the chat, you guys can give him heck. Give Mateo heck if you're more of a Dagger fan, okay, because he's got two of those too. Tell him, you know what, the Dagger's better than the Glock Gen 5. However, however, I mean, be nice to him, but you can rib him if you want. He's kind of turned into one of those Glock, T-A-R-D, you know what I mean? It's a saying. It's an affectionate saying, but it's a saying out there. Says Gen 5 clocks are kind of, Gen 5 Glocks. See, I said clock. You can't even pronounce the name of it. I've never mispronounced dagger even once. Clock, Glock, Flock, Block. Block, I know that. I have some scrap wood blocks from Berlin Offense, and they look a lot like a Glock. Okay, okay. No, all jokes aside. I, I'm, I'm really not razzing all of you Glock fans out there. I'm really just kind of laying in the my friend Mateo. Um he says the Glock Gen 5s are pretty nice. Kind of a game changer, especially when it comes to the 10 millimeter, right? Raw Feeding 101, another super chat. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, I know. Ugh. You're still my friend, too. You're still my friend after all this. Shout out to the Raw Feeding channel, by the way. It is a great channel, guys. But look at this guy. He says, yep, knew the Taurus question would break your brain. Oh, come on, man. <sighs> no, it's a fun question. It's a fun question. Now I already know what people are going to be. Come on, dude. What about the G3C? It's like, dude, I love the G3C. He said I'm only allowed to have one Taurus. Look at this. Look at this tower of boxes back here, okay? Come on. So I'm supposed to reduce that down to a G2C and one. But I did it. Thanks for another super chat, Raw Feeding. I appreciate it, man. Um, Valentine Patriot. No, Glocks are totally fine. Just come on. Somebody like help me rib Mateo a little bit or something. 
I I'm really just going after one person with this, okay? Trust me, he's a Marine. He doesn't care. He's got thick skin. But I'm literally just trying to go after one person with some of this Glock debate stuff. But I do like the dagger better. That's true. I'm prepared for it. Thanks for another super chat, man. Um, thanks, dude. I really appreciate it. He says, uh, what would you, but if you were in a band state? Okay. Look, there's a lot of stuff. And I went off on a whole tangent that, look, dude, that it just ticks me off to even have to answer these questions, right? And obviously, you know that. You're like 10 times more frustrated to ask it than for me to have to try to answer. We shouldn't have to worry about any of this crap, man. If you can, and I'm not going to condemn you for this, although I know this happens a lot on the internet. Look, I assume you're a very smart person and you know what you need to do. And there's certain things out there that are very, very important. Your liberty, the ability to keep and bear arms is very important. You may have family members who are very, very important. You may have people you need to take care of in your home state. I get all of that. The simple answer for me to give setting a fire on the internet is just move, get out. I mean, that sounds awesome, right? But if there's a reason you can't do that, I'm not going to judge you. That's an important decision. Your liberty and freedom to keep and bear the arms that you see fit, very important. Like, how could you get more important than that? Well, hold on a minute. You probably could get just as important as that when you might have, and I'm just going to make this up, you might have an elderly mother that you wouldn't want her in a home or she can't afford a home or whatever, and you might need to go over there after work every day and take care of her. You might have a situation where, and I don't know anything about your personal life prepared for, I'm just saying a lot of people have this. You might be divorced from your spouse and you love your kids more than anything. And you have joint custody. And if you move states, you'll never get to see your kids again. Or barely ever get to see them again. Whew. I'm not going to be one to tell people that every single person that lives in a banned state has to move. No matter what. Because it's just not that simple. I hope you have nothing tying yourself down too hard and you can just move, dude. That would be awesome. I'm crossing my fingers hoping that's an option. So there you go. That notwithstanding that you might have your own circumstances, try to get out if you can. Try to move to a free state and, and, and vote pro-Second Amendment in that state, and you'll be welcome. People don't like it when New Yorkers move to other states and then vote like they're still living in New York City, like a New York Democrat. But if you're naturally conservative or you're naturally liberty-minded, patriotic, oh, yeah. Free states, states that don't have restrictions, they love people who are also going to come in and vote like-minded for pro-Second Amendment candidates and stuff, right? Now, you go down south, some of them will call you a Yankee and whatnot. Yeah, they tried to call me that one time, and yeah, they didn't anymore. But shout out to all the Southerners out there, by the way. Now, Yankee can kind of be affectionately. Sometimes not so much. But I'll be hanging out in the South soon. South Carolina? Well, I'll be going through North Carolina a little bit. I'll be going through Kentucky. I'll be going through Tennessee. And then I'll be barely, barely into Georgia, just like a little bit. Even though I'll be hanging out all day for three days straight in Georgia, it's like there's South Carolina and it touches Georgia. And then I'll be in Georgia, like, just enough. You know what I'm saying? There's some of those areas where they kind of just merge with each other. You know what I mean? Now. My friend, Just Plinkin, he's been a friend for a long time. How's it going, man? I I'm laughing. <sighs> You're still just a Yankee. Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on. I get to dig you back, right? Because I like you. Y'all the South need to read your history. I really can't, by definition, be a Yankee and stuff because I'm going to just go look up what a Yankee actually really is. Anyways, you guys have fun with it. That's all good. Um, Rudy Finney with a super chat. Thanks, man. He says, okay, well, then, thank you, Linda. Ah, there you go, Linda. You must have sent him something nice getting two super chats. And if Linda's thinking, I didn't really send him that much, send him something else, Linda. He's been a really generous channel supporter. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Well, come on. Texas? Texas isn't even part of the United States, is it? I've been told it's the Republic of Texas. And I mean that affectionately, actually. I didn't mean, like, it's not part of the United States. Get out. I like that fighting spirit that Texas has. The Republic of Texas. 
So, yeah, you're not even in the United States. You're in your own country, man. So, come on. Come on, man. Texas has flirted back and forth a few times. I mean, it has been in the past, and people have said it's about this close to becoming its own separate country again. And I think that'd be really interesting. I mean, that could get, like, really philosophical, and we could probably argue for hours of the pros and cons of it, but I'm interested in the topic. I really am. I'm interested in the topic. And here's the thing. For me living in the North my whole life, Union State, Michigan, I think what Abraham Lincoln did was wrong. He suspended habeas corpus. He treaded on states' authorities because states don't have rights. Only people do. Look at the Tenth Amendment. It says nothing about any form of government having rights. I need to clarify this because so many people get it wrong. The federal government has no right. No rights. It doesn't. State governments have no rights. Neither do counties. Neither do townships. Neither does city hall. Now, they'll have where people will vest authority in them to do certain things by the consent of the governed, but they have no rights. But this is often referred to as states' rights, states' authorities. There's many, many policy matters, okay, with the Civil War that I do have opinions on, okay? But I'm just talking about this very narrowly here, so don't think I'm talking about everything to do with the Civil War. It gets complicated. However... For a president to say that he could unilaterally, okay, just squash all of the powers of those states and start arresting enemies, start arresting judges with no writ of habeas corpus. Keep in mind, that's one of the core fundamentals of this country. Lincoln literally suspended. Here's the ironic part about Lincoln, the very, very hypocritical part about Lincoln. Just so you guys know, though, by the way, Lincoln was actually very, very racist. You can look it up. It's provably true. So Lincoln wasn't doing this to try to be good to black people. Hate to break it to you. That's provable. It's not in the history books most people read. So get that out of your head. I'm sure everybody listening right now doesn't think that blacks should be slaves. People are happy that they're free. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about right now because Lincoln didn't like colored people. You know, didn't. However, in his at-all-cost approach to preserve the Union, he actually completely destroyed this Union. He literally, look it up. Look up Lincoln suspending habeas corpus. That's like he literally shredded the United States Constitution. They were able to lock people up with no charge, with no grand jury. And he suspended their right to a writ of habeas corpus. In my opinion, while Lincoln tried to save the United States of America, to give him the benefit of the doubt, or maybe he was trying to destroy it all the, the whole time, he either accidentally or purposely destroyed America in the name of saving it. And I think we've been less free ever since. Because when the 14th Amendment was signed, a lot of people say, well, that made it where people couldn't be slaves anymore. Well, it actually made it where everybody can be a slave. It created a whole new class of slaves. Because you guys know that before the 14th Amendment, you couldn't make somebody a slave when they were incarcerated. So, yes, I'm a northerner, and it's just a funny joke back and forth about the Yankee thing. I'm not really dwelling on that. It just got me off in this tangent. I think the Civil War was just brutal, and it was terrible because there were so many brothers fighting brother. You know, it's not a black or white thing. You look at like the South versus the North. There's the Ohio River that's wide in some spots and not so wide in others. Well, Ohio would become a Union state and Kentucky would be a Confederate state. Don't you think people knew people on the other side of the river? Don't you think? Of course, there was brother fighting brother. There was son fighting father. There was all kinds of people fighting all kinds of people. And a lot of people died, and Abraham Lincoln did some things that were completely unconstitutional. In my opinion, completely shredded the Constitution and made us where we've been perpetually less free ever since then. In the name of making people free. And the Emancipation Proclamation is one thing that I think we would all agree with. I mean, I guess everyone doesn't always agree on everything, but I would hope. However... He made it where all of us can become slaves. You guys do know that, right? At the end of the 
Civil War, the United States government legalized slavery regardless of what color you are, actually. Look at it. It literally, like, literally says that you cannot be enslaved unless, hold on, unless you're incarcerated. It reminds me a lot of January 6th. Lincoln had his opponents literally just sitting there rotting away in a jail cell with no charges, no right to a speedy trial, no due process of law, no innocent to proven guilty, no jury, and they had no ability to demand that. There were judges that ruled against him that he locked up. So, yeah, the North versus South thing is very, very complicated. And it actually has a lot to do with a lot of things that are going on right now. If you ask my opinion. And Republicans will sit there today and say, Lincoln's the best president ever. Why? Because he literally like destroyed the Constitution. And then in the name of setting some people free, made it where everybody can be slaves. It's kind of interesting, actually. Especially when you look up how racist he actually truly was. Rough Eating 101 just became a new channel member. Well, thanks, man. I know you're already supporting me in other places, and um, I really appreciate it, dude. Thank you. I know it's hard for you to make a living like everyone else right now, and it's hard for me too. And just thank you for all of you guys who support so much. That's how I can keep buying this stuff for this channel. Because me personally, like in my day-to-day -day life outside of YouTube, I'm not a professional YouTuber. I think you guys know that. I don't have any extra money to dump into this channel. I wouldn't be able to do much. But due to you guys, I'm able to keep it going. And if I need to travel a little bit to provide content, that's what I'm looking forward to doing later this month. I buy stuff to talk about. And that's you guys helping out with that. I'm, I'm paying my family's bills, doing my lawn service and landscaping, guys. And you guys are helping me keep the channel going. This is actually some... This is actually a really good deal, guys. Again, I can't promote where to get it here, but there's a post down in the description right now. I'll put it in the pinned comment on replay. But right now down in the description, there's a post that says, like, Locals Friday deals. That's what's cool about my Locals community. I can literally put a link and say, this stuff's on sale for $4.99 a box right now. This is good stuff. It really, really is. I bought it not knowing whether it would be good or not. I bought it for the channel to let you guys know about it. And I have video of me shooting this. A little bit on the range the other day, and now I want to put it through some other shotguns. Mainly cheap shotguns is what I have in the collection, but yeah. So if you guys are like, well, he buys stuff, what's it? I'll give you guys a an initial good good report on this. And I'll have some video posted soon of it, but nice stuff. Two and three quarter inch box, ten rounds. This box is deceiving. I talked about this in a previous stream, but there's always new people. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Harry. And Harry's reminding you guys a way that you can, like, definitely very easily help support. By literally just clicking on that thumbs up. It's called the algorithm, right? Leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share. They all say all that stuff. Well, the thumbs ups really do help, though. And people are interacting with that. Her name's Susan Wiki Wiki, right? You guys know who she is, don't you? She's always here when we're on YouTube. She'll suggest it to more new people, and that's how more new people can find the channel. The people are hitting the thumbs ups and all that. Uh, Band Talk, what's happening, man? Thanks for such a generous super chat and a channel member. And I know you're also supporting on other places like locals. Thanks, dude. And I'm looking forward to hanging out with you in about time's flying, dude. I think we're down to what, about five weeks from now? I'm going to be hanging out with some of you guys here in Michigan when I come back up north again. Um, he says, energy, this is a quote, energy and persistence conquer all things. And that's Benjamin Franklin. We can win and we will win as long as people don't give up and fight like hell. Dude, I totally agree. And it, it's like this weird circular conundrum thing. And I don't have all the answers. Ben Talk has a lot of perspective on this stuff. I highly suggest his channel. He does a really good live stream generally every Friday night after this one. But you can opine on this all you want, or I know you do on a regular basis. I don't have all of the answers, but I do know, like, the kind of the answers are out there. And I certainly know a lot of the problems we're having right now. 
And fighting like hell can mean several different things. It can mean the old saying, Lexington Green. You know, you had two small cities, Lexington and Concord and Massachusetts. That's where the shot heard around the world happened. And one of those two places, and it is somewhat debated, but the gist of it is around mid-1775, that was the form of fighting. But the founding fathers were fighting in many, many other ways. They started off peacefully protesting and not so peacefully protesting. They were writing the king. They were demanding. They were doing a redress of grievance. Why do you think they put that in the First Amendment, right? That you're guaranteed the right to redress of grievance. You can petition your government for a redress of grievance. And you can speak and you can peaceably assemble and you can write. And that's translated into the same equivalency of doing videos today and all these things, right? Fighting like hell doesn't just mean the musket, although sometimes it does, and it has in the past. But people say, you know, all political power comes from the barrel of a gun, and it does, but there is a thing called peace through strength. If they, as the saying goes, look out their window and see enough guns, they might not have to get to the point of firing shots. Often people capitulate without firing a shot at all. If you look at the fall of the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Now, I'm not going to say there wasn't one shot fired. There was a lot of weird stuff going on, okay, just on the other side of that Berlin Wall, both sides of it, actually, in Germany and many, many other places throughout the world. But it wasn't a full-on frontal war. That's why we call it the Cold War. I'm not saying nobody died in it. There was a lot of little skirmishes and things that happened. But for the most part, there wasn't that type of war. But there were a lot of missiles pointed at each other. There were a lot of troops, there were a lot of tanks, there were a lot of guns, there were a lot of bombs. And that is a feasible solution. I also think that there's that whole saying goes, the pen's mightier than the sword. Well, that's an argument too, because if you indoctrinate people, remember Khrushchev, the premier of Russia back in the day during the Cuban Missile Crisis, when allegedly JFK got us out of it, but a lot of insiders said, no, he was actually with Marilyn Monroe. One of his cabinet level people or aides actually negotiated with Khrushchev, that Khrushchev from Russia of Soviet Russia. He said, we'll take over the United States without ever firing a shot. And we see China right now colonizing the whole world, including this country. And the main thing they're doing right now, now they might come with guns later, I hope not, but they might. Right now, they're literally just indoctrinating in our universities. They're getting in there. They're influencing curriculum. They're influencing culture. They're influencing professors. There is a method where you can take people over without firing a shot, and that's where you would say the pen is mightier than the sword. However, there's another argument that comes up immediately, but I could come up and hold my sword to your throat, and you'd be forced to hand me your pen, and then I can start writing. Look, guys, it's a very circular thing, and it's something we should think about, but it does go into circles. Is the pen mightier than the sword? Is the sword mightier than the pen? Does all political power come from the barrel of a gun, or does it come from big pharma and lobbyists and the United States Department of Education, which we don't need at all? It wasn't developed until the year I was born, 1979. Let's see here. We came the greatest experiment on self-government of all time without it. But now we need it and we keep becoming less free every day? I don't think so. I would even argue how much of a state board of education we need. But if you were to get me to come to the table, at the very least, get rid of the Federal Department of Education. Bring it down to the states. And then in many cases, actually probably get rid of that too, quite frankly. Energy and persistence. And that means many, many things. And when Bantock said it means Fighting like hell, that also means many, many things. But you have to do something, guys. You can't just sit there and say, but I won't vote because it's too rigged. Okay, if you believe that, here's the thing. There's a survey where many, many people do believe that. Now, on YouTube, I would note that there was nothing actually conclusive that made any final influence. Right, Susan? That's the politically correct thing you have to say on here because we're on YouTube. But many, many people believe that it wasn't legit. So they're not going to vote anymore. I think that's a mistake, and I think you should. However, if you have a better plan, at least hope you have a plan. At least hope you're talking to other people about other methods that you're going to have to do to right the ship and correct the wrongs. 
It's actually just being like lazy and being like a crappy American just to say everything sucks. It's all rigged. I won't talk to anybody about it. I won't even attempt to like try to talk to my neighbors, my friends, my, my family. Won't do that. Also won't vote, won't run for office myself. Like not doing nothing is never, ever, ever going to do anything, right? Like if you literally just do nothing, then you're accepting the status quo. And the status quo is things are just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. And it's really this simple. As complicated as it is, there is one thing that I do know is true. There's a lot of evil in this world. And there's a lot of good in this world. And sure as the days are long, evil will always prevail because it always have. And it always will continue to prevail when good men do nothing. So every one of you need to fight like hell. But there's so many ways you can do that that are nothing to do with Lexington and Concord. In the past, sometimes they have been. But there's so many things you can do. And, yeah, we all need to get it in gear and start doing something. We need to change the culture, I think. It's very, very important in this country. And we need to get out there and actually do stuff. If there's any person out there in the chat right now that's thinking to themselves or or, or just a listening audience, whatever, you might not be chatting. Some of you just kind of turn this on like a radio show. And I appreciate you guys being here. If you're thinking, but, dude, you just don't understand. There's not one person in my whole county that's like patriotic enough that I could ever vote for to be on my county board of commissioners. And that's fair. Actually, that might be true. What about you, though? Are you patriotic and honest enough? Do you believe in the founding principles enough? And if the answer is yes, then it might suck to be you. It might be an honor to be you because you should be honored to serve your government, not because of power or glory or money, but honored that you can give back a little bit to pr try to preserve this republic because we have a republic. Not a monarchy, if you can keep it. That's another quote from Ben Franklin. If, if you're the only honest person or the only patriotic person or the only fair or the only just or the whatever you think, right, that needs to be, then you're going to have to run yourself. And I encourage a lot of you guys to do that. I mean, how many of you guys watching right now are a county commissioner, township board, city hall, state rep, state senator? Now, none of you might not be watching at this any given moment, but I know some people that do have those those positions, those public servant office holders that do watch this stream. But there you go. I might have to be one of you. You guys might just have to run yourselves. <laughs> Get mad at me for that answer if you want, but you might just have to do it yourself. I don't know what to say, but you have to try to do something. Or if you just can't do it for whatever reason, you don't think you have what it takes, you don't have the money to do it, but you know a guy that does, and you think he'd do an excellent job trying to preserve this republic, get behind him. Maybe you've got more money than time, and you write him a check, and that's going to help. That helps. Money is important with all this. Maybe you're broke as a joke, but if he handed you 500 flyers, you could walk, which doesn't cost gas money, and hand them out and tell all the people in your community about this person that you really, really believe in. Because if you want the government to be you, it has to become you. And the only way you can do that is having more patriots, more people who believe in this country, who believe in America, have to become office holders within that government. <laughs> if not, somebody else is going to do it. That's a proven fact, right? I'm trying to offer you guys some encouragement. I think there is some ways out of this, and I'm just throwing some ideas out there, you know? Um, what's happening, Fred? How you doing, man? What's happening, George? Some people coming and saying hello to me. All of you guys that have already said hello, I am definitely going to um to come back and read all of this. So I'm already going to feel bad because some of you guys gave me like awesome encouragement and probably had some good questions. There's just more of you than me, but I, I will come back and read all of them afterwards. Um, but we have been answering quite a few good questions tonight. Some of them I ran it on longer than others, and some of you, that's your favorite part of the channel. So awesome. Some of you are like, dude, just shut up. Well, I'm just going to be me and see what happens, right? Um, Kurt24 with a, um, with a question and a channel supporter. Thanks, man. He says, what's your, in your opinion, got my Taurus selection down to two, G3 Tactical or GX4 XL, which do you like better? Need to try and fit both at local shop and see how they fit my hands. Um, yes. Okay, that's actually a serious answer. Let me give you a little more than that. I really like them both. 
Which one's better depends what you're going to use it for because they're not the same size gun. The G3 Tactical is quite a bit larger, a little bit longer barrel, a little bit longer, you know, native magazine capacity, 15 flush fit versus 11. You can run the 17, even more with different options. And the G3, you can run your 11 or 13. And the GX4 XL. <laughs> It's so hard, guys, for me to do this, by the way, just to answer yes or no, one or the other. It just depends. And you're my friend, Curtis. So I'm trying to give you an answer more than, dude, it just depends. If you could afford it both, because they have totally different purposes. If you were to tell me you're more of a more of a carry gun, concealed carry, we'll say, because you can carry anything you want outside the waistband, right? Open carry, whatever. Because you can conceal outside the waistband too. But just open carry, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> Range gun. Okay, I can boil this down for you. Because I really like both, but they're just not the same gun. G3 XL, or I'm sorry, GX4 XL. GX4 XL, if it if carries any part of the equation, if it's only, only a range gun, it's a close toss-up, but I'm probably going to go with the G3 Tactical. The threaded barrel is nice. You have a bigger optic mounting footprint on top where you're going to have a larger array of optics, okay? But the GX4 and the XL are chassis guns, and they're actually really smooth shooters. So slight edge on the range with the G3 Tactical for a couple reasons, even though the GX4 XL was also a great shooter on the range too, but definitely more concealable. So there you go. But again, this is hard. You kind of did what my friend Raw Feeding did to me. You're making me narrow it down to only one, but hopefully that helped. What's happening, Lori? What's happening, Lori DeVries? How you doing? Dude, there was a time, and I've heard you talk publicly a little bit about this. I'm not going to give up too much of your personal life, but forgive me if I'm going too far with this, but Lori, she's a friend of mine, okay? There was a time when I was talking to her on the phone one day and her car wasn't running. There's nothing wrong with that. Like literally, I just got a car for my wife a couple days ago. We it needs a couple minor repairs. She's driving my car right now. I'm driving her on an F350 steak truck. Okay. I love humble people. I hate car problems. I hate it when my friends have car problems, but people that get tougher when they like don't even have a car to go anywhere, like I love them even more. You know what I'm saying? Lori's car was broke down and she couldn't even drive to an event, but you know what she did? She talked to me and then I talked to my viewers and she was, she was coordinating stuff with her friend, Catherine Henry and other people. And Lori was literally like fighting the good fight and making all kinds of people turn out to this local rally. She got people to this rally and didn't even have transportation at the time. Okay. Now, I've also seen Lori in real life at several events, and I'd like to see you again soon, by the way. Really miss seeing you and Jane and Catherine and everybody all in one place and, and Rick and Rob and just, I guess I shouldn't start mentioning names. Or I'm going to miss somebody, but I'd like to see you again. You're an awesome person, but my, my, my friend Lori was like organizing a rally and like getting all these people there and like an event and like getting Catherine and I hooked up to do live streams together. Like you can do this guys. Even if like life's dealt you a bad hand and you're kind of like down and out at the moment and stuff's not going your way. So there you guys go. There you go. Bear paw, you big dummy. He says, sorry, I just hit the thumbs up button. Thanks for the reminder. I'm a big dummy. Oh, no, you're not man. But, but thanks for hitting the thumbs up button. Lori's a behind-the-scenes person, but that's what I'm telling you guys. Look, you're really going to slap me in the face now, Lori, because now I'm volunteering you for something. If you guys don't know what to do and don't know where to start, being a wingman can be one of the most thankless jobs, one of the most important jobs ever. Lori can literally tell you how to help fight the good fight in your local area and in this whole country if you're <laughs> not even going to be the star of the show. Whatever, right? She's done so much work with Catherine Henry behind the scenes. And yeah, seriously, reach out to Lori, email her. She'll tell you guys what you can do. 
Everybody doesn't need to get up there and talk. Everybody doesn't need to have a YouTube channel. Everybody doesn't need to whatever. Just you guys hang out in this chat, encourage each other on here as much as you can. Get inspired and go back and spread the good news around your hometown. That's where we start. Right, Jane? That's where we got to start and where we got to keep it going. We got to keep pushing these people. And, and, and yeah, most of it, 99% of it, good. Maybe one or two things. She's like, well, no. Catherine and her family are awesome people. They really are really nice. Her husband, Mike, does so much. And I'd like to see them again soon, too, obviously. Those of you that are new to the channel, we're talking about our friend Catherine Henry, who went from making money being a lawyer to now where she, I don't know how she's eating, quite frankly, but she's just went out just to be an advocate and try to fight the good fight. And just like Mateo helps this channel because I don't have any money to pay him because I put everything back into the channel. Catherine's just trying to figure out a way to eat because she's basically doing all this legal stuff for free. And um, Lori's been a very strong backbone and support for, for, for that whole movement and all of that stuff. So Jamie Elkins um, channel member. Thank you. Chapmanville in Logan County. Maybe some of you guys live near each other. That'd be awesome. If not, email each other. Figure this stuff out. You guys can figure it out. It just takes a little bit. That's the hardest part is just to kind of get started. Get started in your hometown. You know? Um, Ryan Harder, how many Taurus pistols you got? Jeez, how many's in the stack? There's actually a couple, believe it or not, guys, that aren't in the stack because the cases were a little bit oblong. Like, my TH9C isn't in the stack there. There's another one, too, that isn't. I don't know. I'm going to shoot from the hip because the stream's been going kind of long here. And I'm going to switch it up and try something here at the very end in a minute. Um, Yeah, 25-ish. It might be 23. It might be 27. We'll say 25. Heck yeah, Randy Smith. Behind the scenes, people are very important, and I'm not surprised donations are low. It's it's a tough time out there right now. I don't know how I've been so lucky to keep this channel going, but you guys have been very, very generous to the channel, so I can just keep coming back and doing this stuff. I have no idea how, but I'm very thankful for it. And Trust me, I don't take any of you guys for granted, like at all. And that includes not only money, which is very important because everything costs money, especially when you're a gun channel, but the words of encouragement, just you guys being here saying, keep up the good fight, man. And that's also, that's part of supporting the channel. Trust me. It truly is. There you go. Just like Edward said, it's because they're great patriots. There's, there's some good people out there. I'm just hoping more people can kind of come out of the shadows and, the silent majority thing, it ain't really working too well anymore, right? I mean, that's another way to look at it. Um, Jonathan has a quick question. You might have a couple starred, Linda, but I'm going to grab this. What's a dream collab you want for YouTube? You know what? This is going to be kind of a, probably a lame letdown answer. Not really any, to be honest with you. I, um, I don't know. I look forward to collabs and stuff. I do. I had really, really good time last night hanging out with Cody from Taurus. I'm looking forward to having a collab with Clover Tack next week. I've had great collabs with Catherine Henry. I've done videos with awesome channels, awesome, awesome people. If I think they're a piece of crap, I just ignore them outright, okay? But here's the problem. Even like awesome people who want to collab with me, I end up having to ignore most of them too because I'm just so darn busy. It's hard for me to like sometimes enough, barely enough time to even get on here and do this, okay? Because it's been tough the last two years. I'm having to just work a little bit harder, okay, to keep my family going with my small business. And I know you guys know what that's all about. I don't know, man. I don't know how to even answer that. <laughs> I guess I don't really have one. I have hung out with some awesome people. And I'll tell you what my dream collab is. I think what you meant is like somebody on the screen next to me. 
actually my dream collab was like right now just hanging out with you guys really i really just like hanging out with people in the chat the most but that's not to say i don't have a great time during my live streams when i have a guest because i really do my friend marksman tv i love hanging out with him in real life i love the collabs i've done with him and i don't know maybe we'll have him pop on he's gonna be we're gonna be staying in the same place he's gonna be like what last last time i was down there and um georgia i was at look it's like where we're staying is like right across the river from georgia south carolina it was technically georgia last time marksman was hanging out like 10 feet away from me while i was going live it's just meh. maybe he didn't feel like getting on i don't know if i officially asked him whatever it was he was just chilling out hanging out with my friend frank um love streaming with chris love hanging out with him in real life he's a good friend i'm gonna get to hang out with him at the end of this week that's awesome so there you go. Um, Matt Christensen. Shout out to the Matt Christensen channel. Okay. Really, really smart guy. Really, really good dude. He does videos that are totally different format than me. But we're all fighting the same fight, though. I'm on the same side as him. We don't think exactly alike. We're not exactly alike. I might disagree with him here and there. He might me. But when it comes to the big picture, he gets it. He's very smart. He does very well prepared, very articulate videos midweek he also has a live stream on sunday nights with his co-host blonde okay and it's a really good live stream and i'm pretty much always in there so i might see you guys in the chat but i definitely love collabing with him too so yeah um <laughs> look guys i never expected to have a youtube channel at all I wanted one for like 10 years before I did, but I had like too much stage fright or something like in the camera, like what would happen if five people like, this is going to sound bad, but I know there's somebody out there thinking the same thing. I'm a pretty easy guy to get along with. I'm not, you know, a very shy person. I have, you know, okay social skills. We'll just say moderate enough to get by, whatever. But I've never, ever, ever wanted to be in the spotlight. I've never wanted to be like, like when people are like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I never wanted to be a movie star or a professional athlete or famous. Like I've never wanted that. And I still don't want that. And thankfully, I probably will never have to deal with that. But at the same time, man, I was like afraid to even do a YouTube channel because what if like five people watched and stuff? I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I guess the best word would be like, I was too scared because what if I was in front of people and they said mean things and stuff? And well, of course, people say mean things when you're on YouTube sometimes, but there's like a thousand awesome people for every one of those, right? So, I guess to sum it up, I never even thought I'd have a YouTube channel like at all. Finally, got the courage to even have one. And while I'm still like a super, super small channel. And I'm going to be hanging out with, like, my friend Don, who's the Suits channel. And he's a really cool dude. And I look forward to seeing him. And he's got, like, a couple million subs and stuff. Like, I'm a very small channel, but I can't believe it ever got as big as it is right now. So, what's my dream? I don't know. I've <laughs> done more on here than I ever dreamed of or I ever thought would be possible. Does that make sense? And there you go. Looks like Jeff's saying 33% of Midwesterns want to be internet influencers and I'm not an influencer and I don't want to be an influencer. I don't like that term influencer. I hate the term influencer. I hate the term influencer. Like literally. Hey, that's cool. I've already said that's all that watch my welding channels, five people. I mean, Hey, do what you do, dude. If, if you want to change stuff up to, Get more viewers. There's ways to do that. But if you just want to be yourself and don't give a crap, then just be yourself. I mean, I'd rather have five viewers and be happy with myself than five million viewers and be miserable, right? You know? I mean, I'd have a lot more subs if I didn't wear this hat. It never fails. Every time I wear this hat, someone comes in. I loved your gun content, but I'm unsubscribing from the channel because of that hat. It's like, whatever. Like, See ya. It'd be great if we could still be friends. Fine, we can't be friends. I'm wearing this hat. I want to wear it. 
I think he's one of the most despicable, deplorable human beings on this whole earth. I think he's trying to destroy this country. And I want to call him out on it. And if we can't be friends because of that, then whatever. We can't be friends. You know what I'm saying, Edward? I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I wish we could still be friends. We were friends, you know, hanging out. I was in the shop doing my tourist video. They said they love my channel. This has happened a thousand times. They're like, but, but you wore the hat. It's like, okay, fine. I guess we can't then. Whatever. <laughs> I'll go hang out with other people that probably don't agree with half of what I say, but we can still be friends and hang out, right? There you go. Raw feeding. Five people's more than zero. And five people that knew more than they did before. Yes, sir. I agree. Mateo's getting ready to get out of here. And I'm about to wrap up the stream, guys, but don't go anywhere because I'm going to try a new feature. So first I want to say bye to almost everybody, but I do want to try something. And, and just trust me, guys, this isn't me like snubbing most of you. This isn't pay to play. So I want to say bye to everybody right now but the channel members. I'm going to try this new feature within YouTube, and you guys will all be able to still keep listening. But I'm going to go in and switch this over in one second to channel members only for the chat. And there's a reason I'm going to do this, and that's because... I want to give them just a little extra perk because it's nice to do that. But the main reason I'm doing it is, is I want to give something away for the second time. Now, here's my idea. We gave it away. Linda picked somebody and they just never went through. Um, they, they just never went through and um, like bothered to email us. They just didn't want it or they got or they got cold feet. You know what I'm saying? And they just didn't claim it. So I think I'm going to just reserve the chat to channel members in just about one or two minutes here. And then I'm going to pick a winner from the channel members because maybe you guys will actually like, let me give you something that I spent a decent amount of my own money for, but I didn't buy it for myself. I bought it for one of you. So, so hold tight guys. And like I said, it's going to stay live for everybody. I'm just about to switch it over to channel members only. And I'm going to give away something here. Um, rabbit hole reviews. Thanks for another super chat. I appreciate it. Says I felt the same way about starting a YouTube channel. Would you mind if I posted a link to my channel in the comments? Okay, that's complicated. So, guys, I don't know anything about the rabbit hole reviews channel to be honest. So, fair enough, right? Rabbit hole. I don't know your channel enough to say whether I would like vouch for it. However, I appreciate you being a channel supporter, and I know a lot of the people that are watching right now. Appreciate your support. I have a thing turned off, and this is because of the Russian porn bots, not you, where you can't post any links in any of my chats or my comments because it's literally to stop, like, Russian, and now they've switched to other foreign languages, porn bots, like, literally advertising pornographic websites. So I have it turned off because of that. If you can look up the channel, Linda, and throw a link in the chat real quick, okay? And I would encourage everybody to, um, like, again, thank you for being a channel supporter. I know a lot of people appreciate it. I would encourage you to go check out the Rabbit Hole Reviews channel and decide for yourself whether you like their channel or not. Fair enough? Just because I'm not familiar with your channel myself. So I definitely have links turned off for that reason. What's happening, KMI Billy? How's it going? And I hope to see a bunch of you guys over at Locals tomorrow night. Yeah, 9 30 10 o'clock eastern time around then i do a one hour stream and yes i look forward to seeing many of you back over there no that, that's literally why so if, if can you do you have time to help me with that linda i will try to and then i'm gonna do something else here okay this other youtube chat's like so far behind right now yeah, the fastest hour on the internet. Yeah. I know how to do it. See, I can't do it from StreamYard. Okay, there we go. Linda's got you. All right. Thank you for supporting, and you guys can go check out the Rabbit Hole Reviews channel yourself, and I will be sure to check it out when I get a chance. All right, I am doing this right now. Give me one second, guys. This is the first time. I'm trying this. Another channel I watch does this, and I hope nobody takes it the wrong way. I'm just going to switch over to members-only chat for just a couple minutes.
He does, and I'm not a channel member of this other channel, and I don't get slighted. I'm like, no, that's cool. If those guys are paying him some money to be a member, then I have no problem with that at all. All right, I'm getting ready to switch it over right now. Let's see what happens. All right, I will see the rest of you guys over next Friday here on YouTube, and I'm going to have a couple of videos in the meantime, and hopefully I'll see some of you over on Locals. The stream should be still going right now. I believe we're in just a little special bonus, members only. Again, I promise this is not pay to play. This is not like you guys aren't cool enough to hang out. It's two things. I want to add a little extra perk to the members. And literally, Linda picked somebody two weeks ago to win this. And they just like didn't claim it at all and stuff and didn't even email me back. Linda's not technically a member, but it's allowing the moderator in. Okay. Well, that makes sense. All right. So what should we base this on, Linda? Here's what it is, guys. I have a 2A EDU, okay, canvas. It's a stretched canvas on a frame here, right? And I have a bigger one that I use just in the channel to kind of just, you know, promote the Second Amendment. It kind of tipped over, but it's right down there. I need to lift it back up again. I was messing with that MCK, okay? And if you guys remember two weeks ago, I, I signed this on air. I, I this is just signed it, so it would be a little personalized thing, so... This is my signature. If you don't believe me, go watch it from two weeks ago. And Linda picked somebody, and we gave him time, and we gave him more time. And if you're watching right now, I'm not mad at you at all. Trust me. Like, I get it. It might have just been something as simple as they they did a typo, or they're like, dude, I don't want this guy to have my address. I don't know. I don't care why. It doesn't matter. But they didn't email. So help me, Linda, because I like all of these people in here a lot. And I have to pick somebody. Well, look at all those. Look at all those emojis. Thanks for becoming a channel member, Bill. You're already supporting in other places. And I'm going to be doing the drawing for the other magazine giveaway over on Locals and Patreon for channel members. It just got put on hiatus for a week, guys, because I was kind of consumed with the whole car situation. I hope you guys understand. But we're definitely going to take care of that over the weekend. This is for everybody, by the way, while the channel members get themselves in the chat. And Linda, can you think of a way? What should we do? Should we randomly? Should you have Baby Girl pick somebody? I want to pick one of the channel members to win this. Um, And I bought this with my own money, by the way. I literally went on Black Swan Tactical. Use my link that's down in the description. And I purchased this. Black Swan Tactical is going out of business soon. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'm trying to work on something behind the scenes. Um, I was never going to have any merch at all, guys, except for a lot of you asked for it. And finally, a couple people were like, dude, like, because here was me. It's back to that whole thing. I'm not an influencer. I never want to be an influencer. I'm sick of all that crap. Like, why would anybody want anything that said 2A EDU? And friends of mine, like you guys, started chiming and saying, no, dude, we want it because... I did this for a reason. 2A is the prominent part. You guys are mainly wanting to just represent the 2A. And you also like giving the channel just a little bit of a shout out. So I started doing the merch to help support uh, my friend John Crump's with small business. And because you guys wanted it. And I've got my hats and, and, and patches and different other things over there. So they're going out of business. I don't know what I'm going to be doing with merch going forward. But I will try to figure something out. Okay, so Linda just threw down the ground rules. Channel members, chime in here. We'll keep this open for a minute or two. Says, closest number that she has in her head between 1 and 50. So I'm assuming she thought of a number and probably wrote it down or has it in her head, and there you go. Pillbox bunker. Well, no, here's what you do, Pillbox. Enter, okay? Enter. If you guys want someone else to win it, you enter, and then you're giving Pillbox an extra chance. So get in there, Pillbox. And what you'll do is if you want Band Talk to have it, let's say you get the right number, all you have to do, and people do this all the time, say, no, dude, I want to throw it over to this other person. That's totally cool. 
So even if you guys don't want this, you don't want me to have your address, you don't, I won't have it anyways, Linda will, but whatever. I could get it if I wanted it. You know what I mean? If you're just so private, you don't want me to have your address. If you just think band talk or if you think Kurt 24 should have it more, or we, the people should have it more raw feeding, whatever, just, just enter. And then what you guys are doing is you're throwing in a, um, a second chance for whoever you would pass it on to. <laughs> but somebody needs to take this thing because now it's, it's all good. <clears throat> I'm not mad at that person at all. Promise. It was just kind of a little frustrating because I'm like, man, 50 people wanted it and like the person that won like didn't even email back at all okay number a number between one and 50 it looks like she's getting ready to wrap it up and if there's a tie i'll flip a coin linda i don't want to make it too hard if, it, if it's a tie and two people got it well we'll flip a coin if three people got the same number i'll pick th i'll pick a number one to three whatever Raw feeding would hang it next to his gun cabinet. So there you go. If somebody wins that doesn't want it, then you could maybe, maybe you'd like to pass it on to raw feeding. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to have fun, guys. Did any of you guys get any of this, by the way? I was talking about this in that last YouTube stream for everybody, and I saw a lot of you guys went over to locals, saw this post. And I'm thinking so many of you guys did. This stuff sold out. So, but this, this SAR USA buck is still available. Okay. That, part, that locals link in the description of this video, that'll get you over to a bunch of awesome deals, including a link to this. But I'm just curious if any of you guys got this. And I know only members can respond right now. This isn't a gotcha. I'm just hoping some of you guys out there in the general audience were able to score some of this because I think it's actually pretty cool. It's like five bucks for a box of 10 of these rifled tornado slugs. Then he's been posting the coffee pot a little bit with the JM4. A couple of you guys that were at the um, hangout at Pillboxes last year. And if you're a channel member, if you're a Patreon supporter or locals, check the post over there. You might have to scroll back a little bit. You'll find it. I need to post that again soon, by the way. Some of you guys brought cool stuff out. I know. I know a couple of you did, and we're just like, dude, I just want to give this away to one of the people that were there. We're going to have fun. We're going to have fun, and we're going to... Marksman TV, I saw him in here just briefly earlier. Didn't get a chance to say hi to him in real time, but... Uh, I'm going to give you guys a little more of a teaser. The ones that are coming to my hangout, it's going to come down to this. I'm going to let you guys know in the next couple weeks what caliber you need to bring with you. There's only one reason you need to do that. You don't have to bring your own ammo, really. Just kind of bring a little bit. It's just a happy-go-lucky thing. It's not a formal thing at all. But there might be something there where you might have the inkling that you want to dump some ammo. So just get, I'm going to talk to Chris in the next day or two, narrow down what caliber it's going to be, and you guys might want to bring. I think I'm going to go so far with this, you're going to really guess what I'm hitting at now. This is in early November, okay? You might want to bring like a case of ammo to like dump something or a few boxes. You know what I'm getting at? <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited. Like he's going to bring something with him to our hangout that I definitely don't have access to normally. Pew, pew, pew. Data said pretty much. Fan talk. Brr. Oh, yeah. All right, Linda, do you have it down? Let's give you guys about two seconds and get in there and pick. If not, it's like whatever. You snooze, you lose. And now nah, these guys have had enough time. Man, I'm rooting for all of you. How's my new GF3 com um Komobi, right? Como Komobi? Komobi. Um, you know what's funny is I told you guys this. And this is, this is on that deal over on Locals, guys. I can't promote it here if you're curious what I'm talking about. But that GF3 I shot in one of the shorts. I told you, between me and three other friends, we bought four of them. Okay? So my three friends went to the range and brought all theirs. I still hadn't had a chance to get to, 
to get to the gun shop, to get the super match down in Newport to pick up the transfer. So that video short I did on YouTube was the first shots of my friend's GF3. The same identical one, though, as mine. So I ended up shooting a couple of those, and they went great. Mine, well, come to locals tomorrow night. I'll show you guys mine. It's here in the shop. I can't touch it live because I'm on um, YouTube. But if you guys want to see that, and by the way, when I say come over to locals, for all of you guys watching right now, um, go sign up for a free account. I'm going to have the stream open to everybody. Sometimes I do supporters only streams over there just to be cool, just to give a little perk for people. But tomorrow night, if you want to see my new GF3 AK, that's the PSA forged. It stands for forged gen three, right? GF three. And you guys are going to laugh. Okay. So I'll show it to you guys, but I haven't shot mine yet. I just shot other friends of mine. It was such a good deal. Like literally, Four of us bought them within an hour of each other. So that was pretty cool. You guys are going to think this is crazy. I was in my garage the other day looking for something. And you know what I found? So I already have a Gen 1 PSA AK that I had from the very, very beginning. Then they came out with the GB2. It had the star on it. Like that stood for a... Billet to Trunyan. This is before it was forged. It was like Billet. Do you guys remember this? It was called the GB2 Liberty AK. Well, me being more of a purist with my mill serps and me kind of being down on American AKs for good reasons for a lot of years. Now, if you've been paying attention much around here, I've changed my mind with PSA on that. Now, I still love an old pre-band. I still love an import. That's awesome. But for the money... And just really, really like what I saw down there at PSA. I watched them build them. I was behind the scenes. I was literally standing, like, from me to you, meaning the camera's only, like, two foot from me right now, from, like, the rivet presser. I saw everything there was. They gave me literally unfettered access to see how they build them. I built AKs before. PSA's doing it right, okay? It was a little bit of a learning curve for them. Their Gen 1 wasn't what it is today. And their Gen 2 was a big improvement, but still wasn't what it is today. And they know that, and they did some big rolling changes and retooling, and it, it's much different now what they're doing, I was told, which I was very impressed with, than how they started. Okay, with that said, I found a brand new in the box GB2 Liberty AK that I bought because it was like on some PSA daily deal, Black Friday, four or five years ago, but I wasn't like really that thrilled about it because it wasn't a foreign AK. And to me, they have to come from the correct country of origin. I'm still into all that. I love collecting mill serps and I love that, but I don't know. My curmudgeon butt finally said, all right, all right, I get it. And it's from you guys. Like, dude, you have to give PSA a shot. Like they're actually got it figured out. And I'm like, all right, whatever you guys win. I'll, I'll try. So I bought that GF three last year. R built off the Romanian parts kit. That was a little bit of both, okay? That was kind of half and half. So, yeah, um, give us the number, Linda, because that doesn't mean much to me. There's there's like three numbers. Is it, the, is it the month? Is that what we're talking here? Is it the date? Or is it the year? Because I guess the year would be greater than 50. So is it the, the month or the day? Oh, you already said that up there. Okay. So she would have picked 28, right? Do I have this right? Is that what you is that what you did? The 28th. So who's the closest to or is it the seven? Because Ron Wayne said seven. I don't know. Hopefully Linda's got this figured out. Yeah, see so you threw them for a loop, Linda, when you said it was in July. Okay, she's saying the birthday. So the 28th, so it's 28. And it looks like Bill Camperis was the closest to the 28th. But yeah, I've loved my Romanian GF3, which was built off of a Romanian parts kit with um with a new PSA receiver and barrel. Built by PSA. I was really impressed with that. So now I took the full plunge and bought a just straight up GF3, no Romanian parts, made in the USA. 
sorry for a little bit of mix up, um, guys. This is where you're learning what it's like to be a YouTuber, Linda. You have to think four times before what you type. Sorry if there was some confusion um, for the chat here. Linda said, I picked my, my birthday day. Now, technically, she's right. I mean, there's month, day, year. But then you kind of messed it up and said it was in July. So that instantly made people think seven. So, but, but she said the birthday, but you guys are all my friends. I wanted you all to win. Okay. So it looks like Bill got the 28th. And now we have a deal real quick. I'm getting ready to get off in one second. I need um band talk to come chime in. There's a proffer, but it's with stipulations and I'm not going to get involved in it because, um, it's just a gift without anything expected back. You guys could use this as a target. So Bill offered it to Band Talk and said, "I'd like to give it to you, but as long as he puts it up in view." And I don't think I don't think Band Talk he means that you have to keep it up like forever and ever just for an episode. That's what Bill proffered, and if Band Talk agrees to it, Bill's going to pass his his winning on to him. Um, He's going to pass it on to um to our friend Red with the Band Talk channel. Okay, and he said deal. So there you go. I knew somebody would hook somebody else up like that. Okay. Linda said, Denny said happy birthday. And that's why she said it was in July. So if there was any confusion at all, sorry, guys. She didn't mean it like that. Dude, I can mail it to you before um, before November if you want. But if you'd like me to give it to you personally, I will. All right, deal, and it's done, and Bill's happy, and Band Talk's happy. Um, Linda, make a note. Let's send um, – email Bill and ask him what patch he has because he might already have a patch. Well, let's send Bill a patch since he was cool enough, since he technically won, but passed it on to – it's a band talk. Oh, geez. In other words, it's Denny's fault like normal. There you go. Now, keep in mind, I'm only seeing half the chats, too, because when I'm using this program I'm using, it doesn't show all of them. So. Cool. Email. Email Bill, Linda, please. Write that down in your list. And. Say, um, we want to send you a patch, and if he says, I already have the black patch, then send him a red, white, and blue. Whatever. <laughs> Ron Wade said patch. Did someone say patch? Hmm. I have an idea. I'm going to do this offline, but here's what it's going to involve, Linda. I think I'm going to have you send Misty another patch. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm going to get in trouble here with Ron. Ron's like, dude, we used to be friends. You're kind of pushing it. I think I'm going to send Misty another patch. So her patch collection can be bigger than Ron Wayne's. Just for fun. You know what I'm saying, Ron, right? Let's send Misty another patch here soon, Linda. We'll figure out one. I've got a few random ones you guys probably haven't seen. Um, ADXR920 still trying to um, make November work. Look, all I ask of you guys is let us know as soon as you know. It'd be nice to know a little bit ahead of time. So we can, you know, get everything together and whatnot. But just let me know when you know. Do the best you can to figure it out. All right, guys. I had fun hanging out tonight. I will see some of you over on Locals tomorrow night. Whoever wants to come hang out for that one. I'll be back here again at 930 Eastern time next week for another live stream. And I will have other videos. In the meantime, we'll figure it out, Ron. I'm, we'll figure it out. I'm tempted, though, but we'll figure it out with the patch. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.